Today's video is part two of our look at the PC Junior. We're going to be doing a minor upgrade and we're going to be taking a look at a particular peripheral uh, add-on for the PC Junior. Hey everybody, so this video actually was supposed to be part of the main PC Junior video, but that video turned out to be much, much longer, surprisingly, uh, than I expected. And usually I don't mind doing like really long videos, but it was getting into like the hour and a half mark, and I just felt that was just, it was getting to a point where it was going to be a little bit too long for uh, my video on the PC Junior, so I decided to split it into two. So, if you haven't watched the first video, I definitely recommend you watch that video. And that's more just a general overview of the PC Junior, and just generally looking at the PC Junior and talking about it, and checking out a few games. So, this video is primarily, I want to do two things. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go into this computer and make sure it's uh, socketed, because the one we opened up in the last video was actually my backup PC Junior. Uh, it wasn't the actually one that we were showing off games on and such. So I want to open this up, take a look inside. If it is socketed, which I believe it is, uh, I want to throw in an NEC a V20, uh, kind of a little upgrade. Now, if you watch the first video, you know the PC Junior CPU runs slightly slower than a standard, you know, 5150 uh, with an 8088 running at 4.77 megahertz. Now, again, I'm not 100% on the technical side of this, but something because how the video and memory works it just it's the same CPU but it runs a little slower so my thinking is maybe putting in an ACV20 will make up the difference and actually you know give it a little tiny bit of a boost and then the other thing I want to do I have a weird uh, quad RAM adapter that adds another floppy bay and supposedly memory and I've never tried that out so we're gonna take a look at that and see if I can get it working or not. Uh, so other than that, this should be a much shorter video. Again, I definitely recommend watching the uh, part one on the PC Junior on my channel. But, um, all right, let's go ahead and let's uh, take a further look at this machine. Very interesting. Now, opening, I've never opened this one up before, but just opening it up right away, I see a few slight differences. First of all, the RAM card here, the extra memory, seems to be in some kind of uh, casing. So, I don't know, I mean, I it doesn't really, it's just it's just in like a metal case. I don't know if it's supposed to act as like a little heat sink or something, or just like extra packaging. So that's interesting, but I don't know if my eyes are deceiving me, but the power supply here is also quite a bit smaller. And it has this little heat sink thing on it as well. Uh, maybe this is a later IBM PC Junior, which worries me a little because that means the CPU might be soldered onto the board. But yeah, let me check here. Here's the other one I've got here. Let me open it up uh, just to confirm. This is okay. Very hard to do with one hand. Okay, there we go. And okay, yeah, there is the heat sink on this, but it's here. It's a little different. Yeah, this is definitely a longer power supply card so yeah this is definitely shorter so uh, maybe they just made it a little bit more efficient or something like this I don't think this is one of the the aftermarket ones uh, we've got some marking down there yeah I don't I don't think this is one of those aftermarket power supplies I don't think I mean that would be nice if it was but I think it's just a, maybe a later one that's just shorter so I'm gonna have to pull out this drive here which looks a little different from that one. But anyways, I'm going to pull this one out and we'll take a look at the uh, CPU socket underneath. Another very slight uh, difference I've noticed with my case is two of my three PC Juniors don't really have any dividers between, you know, there's the joystick ports. There's a little, like a black bar down in there, uh, but there's no, like, dividers. But on this case... If you can see it, there's like plastic uh, dividers for the different uh, connectors. So, yeah, it's a very slight difference, but I, I do like this one better with the more pronounced uh, dividers there. 
Okay, pulling, pulling that drive out, it looks mostly the same in here. Same CPU, it is an Intel 8088 running at 4.77 megahertz. Right here, thankfully it is socketed, so yeah, I'll pop that out and just throw in an NEC uh, V20. Yeah, just for, just for kicks. Alright, it's in there. I don't know if it's going to... I mean, it should work. It gave me some trouble. Uh, some of the pins were a little bit off and it got bent a little bit, but it seems okay. So we'll put it back together and see how it goes. Now, I had a guy, I think it was on my Tandy 1000 SX video uh, from a while back. He commented uh, specifically because I suggested maybe putting in an NEC V20 in there. And his, he said that it was a terrible idea because it was just, it's too fast. And it makes things incompatible, not because it makes things incompatible, but just because it runs faster than the game expects, and it, it ruins the speed timings with the game. And I don't I've got to disagree on that one. Although it does run a bit faster, I haven't encountered any games other than maybe a few, maybe, where it ran too so fast that it ruined the timing of the game or it ruined the game. I mean, maybe... Like, Striker is very speed sensitive, and it, it maybe it was a little harder to play because the helicopter moved a little bit faster. But in general, I, 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 don't, I haven't found the of NEC V20 to, to break a game by being too fast. It, it, I, I don't know. I have to disagree on that point. I still recommend an NEC V20 uh, as an upgrade for a little bit of a speed boost. Now, again, there are, like I said, there are a few games that really demand, you know, 4.77 megahertz, uh, 8088. Uh, there certainly are, and there is a version of Load Runner that the CPU breaks. So, if you want 100% hands down compatibility with those very early games, stick with your 8088. But if you want a little bit of a speed boost, I don't think the the, the incompatibility that this chip introduces is enough to to count it out and not use it. Um, so I think for most users, I do think an NEC V20 is a good upgrade. I, I have to disagree that it, it really breaks enough uh, software that, you know, you shouldn't use it. Yeah, all right, it seems to be working here. And if we look right here, uh, computing performance index relative to IBM PC, before we had, I believe it was 1.0, so now we have 1.8. So... Uh, it does appear the V20 is working correctly, so, uh, perfect. And here's, a uh, Flight Simulator running on the PC Junior. 16 color low resolution mode with that PC Junior booster option selected, uh, whatever that is. Do I notice a difference with the NEC V20? Uh, maybe it's hard to tell without having them side by side. Um, certainly not running horrible for this system, but certainly seems uh, playable. Um, but is it a huge improvement over the 8088? Uh, again, I, I get hard to tell uh, without them being side by side. But uh, maybe, maybe a little bit. Maybe I can notice a, a slight difference. All right, let's try a game, uh, Pit Stop Two. Uh, this is a booter game, so I have it in there. I just read the um, the little README. So I should be able to do Control-Alt-Delete, and then it should boot the game up. So let's try that out, and let's see if it works. Let me hit the lights, and uh, we'll see if this game actually non-system disk or disk error replace and strike any. But it says... I don't know. It's supposed to be a booter game, um, so it's supposed to just boot up, but... It's not just booting up, so uh, no luck with Pit Stop 2. Let's try something else. All right, let's try Striker again. Now, I think this disk is actually corrupted. Uh, yeah, data error. I can keep hitting retry, and sometimes it will, it will eventually work, but unfortunately, well, there it goes. Unfortunately, though, I believe that my Striker disk is not doing so well but I just want it this is a very speed sensitive game so I just want to see if I notice a difference with the NEC V20 in there if I can even get it going because I believe it's going to continuously well um, throw errors yeah I just keep having to hit R but maybe I can at least get into the game and have a couple seconds here um, this joystick. 
No, it doesn't. It, it, it does not seem to be playing too fast at all. It actually seems pretty correct. I mean, maybe a, maybe like a smidge speedier than usual, but nothing that's breaking the gameplay. It actually might make it a little little more enjoyable. So, um, yeah, I would say the NEC V20 actually might make this game a little bit more enjoyable um, overall. But yeah, it's not breaking it or anything um, as far as making it go too fast. All right, so here is. Ace of Aces. Uh, obviously, this is CGA. I couldn't tell in the box. It said it supported IBM PC slash Tandy. So I was hoping maybe it had a 16 color mode. But again, this CGA on this monitor looks absolutely amazing and excellent. Alright. Let's accept. Again, this all looks very nice. Uh, I, I, geez, I almost would say this is the best I've ever seen CGA displayed on a CGA monitor. Um, and that includes like my my Tandy CM5 or my Amdec um, monitor, which is supposed to be right up there with the CM11. I've seen uh, the IBM, the what is it, the 5151. Um, of course, that was a long time ago. I, I don't know. This looks really this monitor, it just never ceases to impress me. It's so sharp with CGA. It's, uh, it's crazy. And uh, maybe I just have a sp uh, specifically like good example of this monitor that uh, perhaps it has very low usage or something. I don't know, but... So this game, um, Ace of Aces, was just running. You saw it just running. And... Uh, I restarted it because I wanted to check something before I got into the gameplay and things like that. And I've loaded up DOS again and I put the disc in. And obviously, it reads the disc. It's, it's reading it fine. But now when I run the game, exactly what I did last time. I ace and I hit it. And it starts reading the disc like it's going like it normally would. It just throws me back to the A prompt. Hold on, it takes a minute here. And it throws me back to the A prompt. What happened between the restart? Okay, I tried resetting the computer. I, same thing, I guess the game just doesn't run now. I guess it corrupted between last we played it. Alright, let's try yet another game. Let's try a game, War Eagles, World 1-1 one, one Flight Sim. Now, you may be tempted to say, ah, well, your NEC V20 upgrade seems to be causing issues. Uh, I assure you, I do not believe that's the case at all. I had just as many issues with this machine before the upgrade. Uh, I think it's just the suckiness of the PC Junior. Because uh, games that worked before, like uh, MS-DOS Flight uh, Simulator and, um, oh, well, Flight Simulator <laughs> and uh, Striker worked on this machine. Striker issues with the disc, but those worked prior before the upgrade. So uh, I don't think the upgrade's to blame for any of these issues. I think it's just this PC Junior uh, in general. So we'll see if it plays uh, War Eagles. It seems like it's trying. It's reading the disc. Um, it should give us an option of modes. I'm hoping there's a Tandy 16 color mode we can try out. If not, we'll just um, we'll just try uh, CGA mode. Okay, War Eagles. Uh, well, already with these lines, I don't think that's normal. Uh, but at least I can read this text here. War Eagles, 1989. Do you have a joystick? Say yes. Uh, okay, so we get well CGA, EGA, black and white monitor. EGA will not work, so we'll just go with CGA. And I'm just going to cut ahead to the game. There we go. War Eagles. Uh, again, looks fantastic. Um, ah, I don't know what I, I, I don't know what I just hit there. <laughs> I, oh, I hit, I hit it too early. Hopefully it didn't do anything crazy here. All right. Nationality here. We can select British or the Germans. Oh, let's go with the Germans. Uh, pilot name. Yeah, I don't... Well... Yeah, I think this machine... 
Well, I mean, it's running, so that's a plus. And for CGA graphics, I know it probably doesn't come across that well on the, on the camera here, but uh, for CGA, it looks fantastic. But this game seems to be, it's a little too unresponsive for, yeah, for the, uh, even for the NEC V20. I mean, eh, it's not, yeah, it's pretty horrible. It's it's a slideshow, but but it does technically run. Um, so it does run, it just runs too slow on this machine. This, oh, I might crash into him. <laughs> this looks like, uh, this looks like a job for at least a 286 here. And, I mean, that's a shame. I mean, you'll run into that. The, the 8088 and even the NEC V20, they're not super powerful CPUs, and, and games quickly came out that, that even CGA that kind of demanded more. Although I would argue you can still have a lot of fun with an 8088 or an NEC V20. There are still a lot of games that will run fine, um, just like action-oriented flight simulators aren't necessarily among games that run well uh, on an 8088-type uh, processor. You probably want to stick with more like turn-based RPGs, turn-based strategy, stuff like that. But at least it's running, so that's a plus. Alright, let's finish off our uh, look at games here with Planet X3. This is a newer game, not from too long ago. What's the date on here? 2018. From 8-Bit Guy. And this is a great game to test for a lot of older machines. Uh, it was explicitly made, I believe, for like older machines like XT, PC, uh, AT. It's a strategy game, um, so usually it runs well. And I think it has explicit support for PC Junior, I think. Alright, I don't know if you can see with the camera, it might be a little blurry. But we do get video modes, we get CGA, uh, 320 by 200 we have composite 16 color, which we could do if we had a different monitor. And then we have Tandy PC Junior 160 by 216 color mode. So it does look like it explicitly supports the PC Junior um, in 16 color mode. So we'll do that. Let's hit four. And then audio, we have PC speaker. We have Tandy slash PC Junior ad lib and um, OPL2 LPT. So it looks like it does explicitly support the PC Junior's uh, enhanced sound, so we'll hit 2. And then uh, it should load up. Okay, I just heard. Alright, that looks pretty good, but um, I do not hear the music. So there should be an intro song playing here, and it should be with the enhanced uh, Tandy PC Junior sound, but I don't hear. I get, I'm getting sound effects, but I don't hear any music. Uh, looks good though, 16 color. It's a little bit of an odd palette in my opinion, <laughs> but it looks good, but mm, I'm pretty sure there should be music here, so I'm not sure what's going on, uh, but let's just start a game. And it's loading up. Um, So now that I think about it, I did play this in my last video, uh, in part one. Uh, and now that I think about it, there wasn't sound then either. But looking back, maybe I thought I just hit a, the wrong sound option or a different sound option. But I'm not getting yet yeah, anything. Um, yeah, look, music on. I can turn it on and off, and I still don't get it. We do have sound effects from the PC speaker, but... Um, what is this? Eh, anyways. Um, but yeah, see, this game, this game runs fine. So games like this run fine, uh, generally, like strategy games and stuff on a 8088, even in 16 color. Uh, even though this was kind of optimized, it is a newer game, but, um, yeah, I don't know why we're not getting sound here. Let's build something. Let's build a, uh, let's build a factory right there yeah so yeah I'm not a hundred percent sure why there isn't music playing if anyone knows please let me know uh, it did specifically say PC Junior so um, I don't know maybe maybe I'm wrong maybe there isn't supposed to be music playing I'm, I'm not sure 
Uh, yeah, this thing zips along pretty quickly on this machine. Uh, yeah, no, no issues. Just looking for that enemy base. What the heck is this? Okay. This looks weird. Is this, uh, this doesn't, I don't know. That didn't look correct, but maybe it is. <laughs> that just looks weird. Um, it looks garbled and corrupted, but I, I don't think I've ever played it in this graphics mode. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe that is correct how it works. Uh, all right, that's enough uh, looking at games for now on this machine. So this is my third PC tuner, and as you can see, it's a little bit taller. Uh, I have not tested this at all. I haven't even tried to power it up or anything. Uh, down here, it's just a standard uh, PC Junior. The only difference I could see is the power switch on the back is black instead of red. I'm not sure if that signifies anything, but what really matters here is when I picked this up, it came with this quad RAM attachment. Now, what this does is, well, it uses this long sort of sidecar to attach the PC Junior to the quad RAM uh, device and it should add a B disk drive so that's very helpful and I believe it also it might add a real time clock and memory so if this thing works um, I might see if I can swap this out for a 720k and then I mean we'll see go from there I might do some part switching between this and the the confirmed working junior if this works and I don't know, maybe I can get a, a junior at the end with 640k of, of RAM, maybe a real-time clock, and uh, maybe a, a drive, a B drive. So, uh, first step here is turning this thing on and just seeing if any of it works at all. Now, this does require its own full power supply, so you'll need a uh, same power supply as the PC Junior itself. So, you're going to need two power supplies, which I have, so we're going to power this all up and see if it does anything. All right, the monitor's all uh, warmed up here, so let's hit the power and see what happens. All right, that's promising. We've got the IBM display. Okay, it's counting up. we got 64. Okay, 108K, uh, that makes sense. Uh, this would have, you know, without the memory sidecar, this would have 128K max in it. Uh, unless this was just, you know, miraculously everything was working and there's extra memory in this quad RAM. Um, error A, and it doesn't look like we can bypass that. Um, okay, so uh, mixed results. I'm glad that at least we're getting something. We've got a, our kind of post screen and we it counted up the memory. So after looking up that error A, error A is a memory error. Um, so something's going on with the memory here. So I took the top off this expansion, um, and there's not much in here. There's the power supply for it, and then of course we have the other floppy drive, and then here, I'm guessing this here is just the extra memory. Uh, I don't know, maybe that's a, is that, that's like a Texas Instrument chip, I don't know, maybe that's the controller for it. And then we have all this memory here. It looks like it comes with whatever this is standard, and then you can add all this memory, and they're all full. So I don't know how much total is on here, uh, but we are getting a memory error, and I'm not really sure what's going on. I, I would suspect that, like, maybe it has to run a driver or something, but it's not even getting to, uh, like, checking the floppy drive, so it doesn't even have an opportunity to do that. It's just doing the memory count. Um, so maybe some of the RAM somewhere is bad. Um, I, I have I have no idea because I have no idea about this thing um, and what it could be. Uh, really, because I have that memory side car expansion on this, I don't even really necessarily care about this memory. So I'm actually wondering if there's a way to just disconnect this and just I I, I really just want the second floppy drive. That's really all I care about. I mean, it would be nice if it worked, but uh, so I don't know, maybe I can, I see it like connects down there, maybe I can disconnect this portion of it and just maybe use the second drive. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, so I'm not really sure what to do. Um, I think I can look down and looking into the PC Junior. Maybe I'll try taking this off and looking at the PC Junior. Maybe, I, I don't know, I have no idea. 
So I removed the quad ram expansion. Um, a pretty standard PC Junior under there. Uh, I checked out it does have a socketed CPU. It has that shorter power supply like my other one. Uh, we have a double uh, floppy connector here, obviously for the uh, the two floppies. Um, and it does have the extra memory for the 128, but. Uh, I tried it with the memory expansion removed and this in there, and I would still get an error A. And with this removed, it does count up to 64, but now I'm getting an error H. So maybe there's an issue with this PC Junior. So I'm going to um, try removing that memory sidecar from my known good working PC Junior and attach the quad RAM expansion and see if we get any kind of different result. And if you're wondering, this is that big side connector um, that was connecting the quad RAM to the PC Junior. It has these two. It looks like a power. And then um, I think that with the floppy uh, coming off the floppy cable uh, connected right there. And then it just connects. And then it connects to the sidecar slot. Just a serial number. Um, not much else. And the quad ram, there was nothing actually attached. There's no like screws or tabs. It just uh, presses down pretty flush, and you push it forward, and it just kind of latches on. It's 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 very like solid. I, I it took me a couple minutes to actually figure out how to take it off because there's like no screws, nothing like that. Uh, but so it it actually it's a uh, it's a very good connection once you have it like connected. But it's. Uh, but yeah, it is a little tricky. Uh, at least for me, it was a little tricky to take off. Alright, I've got the quad RAM expansion hooked up to the known good working PC Junior. So let's see what happens. And remember, I took the, the sidecar off, the uh, RAM expansion sidecar off. Oop, that's on a little bit loose. Let me tighten that and then we'll uh, hit power and see what happens. Oop, and we get a an error H at 128k so uh, I'm gonna have to look up what error H is alright well two things it still only detected 128 which means um, I don't know it's not seeing that extra memory there whatever amount that is and second error H is a diskette or disk drive error uh, or an issue with the disk controller uh, so I don't know uh, obviously, it's it's possibly an issue. Well, that's weird. I mean, I, I think it would be an issue because we have a second drive. But even with the not working PC Junior, where this wasn't attached and it just had the single, it was also having the error. error. Uh, I'm gonna pop this off. I'm just gonna make sure the the uh, floppy drive controller card is seated well. Maybe that's the issue. Well, I've reseated everything, I checked the connections, everything's very firmly connected. And I'm getting uh, error A again at 128k, so... Uh, I don't know what's going on here. I don't really have any experience with this thing, um, the, the quad RAM. So I'm not sure. Uh, I guess this dash is my dream of a second floppy drive on here. So... Um, I guess I'm going to put it back to its configuration it was before, and uh, I don't know, I'll probably, uh, I'm going to probably keep this guy around, uh, and I don't know, I'll just throw the whole quad RAM thing onto the back burner. Maybe one of you guys watching the video can tell me, uh, maybe you have more experience with this, and you can tell me maybe what you think is going wrong, and uh, what to look out for, and then uh, I can come back to this project, and uh, hopefully get this thing working again I'm not really I don't really care about the extra RAM because I have that sidecar that gives me that maxes my RAM out but I just want the second uh, floppy drive on there so if, you, if any of you guys know what's going on or how I what I should troubleshoot or whatever um, let me know and that was our look at uh, well my NECV20 uh, slight minor upgrade to my uh, working PC Junior, and then us taking a look at this uh, quad RAM uh, memory floppy drive expansion device. And I believe there's another one from Rancor, I think, that's very similar to this one. 
Uh, they might even be the same thing, it's just renamed. But yeah, I'm not sure if the Quad RAM and the Rancor uh, disk memory expansion are, are like the same thing, it's just been rebadged or not. I'm not sure, but um, that's out there. I'm just letting you guys um, know about that. There is, I believe, another uh, type of expansion like this from, I think, another company. Like I said, unless it's just like a rebranding or something. But anyways, yeah, big bummer. I uh, couldn't get this thing to work. If you guys have any ideas on what the issue could be, let me know. Uh, other than that, yeah, the PC Junior still kind of sucks. One last time, I, I definitely would watch part one. I mean, if, you've, if you're at this point, you've watched this whole video. Uh, but I would definitely recommend going back and watching part one of uh, this whole PC Junior thing. Uh, I, I didn't expect the, the whole PC Junior videos to be this long. I didn't think I'd make two of them. Uh, heck, maybe <laughs> if I can get some good tips on maybe what the issue is with this and I get it uh, set up and working, maybe there'll be a part three of our look at the PC Junior. But yeah, I'm, I'm not... A, it's neat, it's cool, but like I said in part one, there, there's better options. Get a Tandy 1000. Uh, it's just, it's a neat thing, but it's a pain in the butt. Uh, I would not recommend acquiring a PC Junior, unless you're like an Avid collector or an IBM collector. So, that's the video. Thank you for watching. Comment below. Please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.